Uh, Willie Jackson, let's first of all concentrate on the electorate vote. Um, your take on that? Oh, I think that what you're seeing is clearly the door's been opened up uh, a little bit to Labour. Uh, that's, that's what you, you have to deduce at the end of it. Uh, if you look at southern Māori, for instance, you're quite right, Rahui Kātani has done a lot of work on the ground. For some unknown reason, Leno Tiri Kātani is ahead by default. If you look at Tariana Tūria's seat, for goodness sake, are you trying to tell me the Minister is only 8% ahead of the Labour candidate who no one's ever heard of? 48% versus 40%. Another sign that the door's, the door's been opened to Labour. And then we come to Hone's seat. <clears throat> uh, 2% apparently the Labour candidates are here to Hone. Doesn't make sense. Can I ask you about splitting the vote? Because that's the very well, reason well, that... why you chose not to stand for the Mana Party in Tamaki well, Makoto well, because well, of splitting the well, vote. Well, it was one, one of the reasons. I mean, there's a number of reasons, but, but never mind me. All, I, all I'm saying is that, the, you know, in 2008, the Māori Party was looking at seven seats. That's what they talked about, but a, grand, I am a grand slam. Sorry to interrupt you, because I am interested in the whole theory or concept around splitting the vote. Well, Nobody I think that's clearly happened. Let's move on, because it does seem like, for example, the Taitukero result. It, 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 it potentially, Labour could come through the middle. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, I agree with Tariana that there's a lot of volatility in this poll, and uh, I suspect there's going to be quite a lot of change as we move closer to the, the election. And... Um, uh, I, I just want to correct one thing in there, Shane, and, and that is uh, the Māori Party is down about 20% uh, on the last poll in terms of the party vote. Um, it's also down 15 points on um, the electorate vote, overall electorate vote, since 2008. And I think that's a really key figure. It's also important to remember that Labor is also losing party votes. They're down about 13 or so since 2008. Now, that tells us a number of things. Labour and the Māori Party are bleeding some votes to the Mana Party, but the Māori Party shouldn't be too worried at the moment because they had quite a large buffer in terms of their majorities from 2008. Labour is steady in three seats, up in two and down in two, and that, that shows us there's that volatility. Now, what I think that means is that Māori voters have given up on the idea of one party clean sweeping all seven seats. Mm. And in six of the seats, what we're seeing is that people are starting to vote as much for the individuals as the party. Who's the best person to represent our interests? And the one exception to that is Tāmaki, is Auckland. Now, for the Māori party, um, I think in the north, uh, this is a landline poll, uh, the kind of uh, people that will vote for them, a lot of them are going to have cell phones. So, you know, if you look back uh, before the by-election, uh, one poll came out and it showed it dead even, but Horney was about 9%. Not this 9%, poll, though. Not Let's 9% ahead. That. Yeah, yes, not this poll. Uh, that other programme. Um, and Horney was about 9% ahead. And I think they're a little bit, uh, doing a little bit better um, th than we've seen. Having said that, I think that the Mana Party hasn't built on the momentum of the Northern by-election result. Okay. And I think they've spread themselves a bit thin and they need to concentrate uh, need to concentrate on just a few seats. Now, I think... I just want to bring Maria Barge yeah, in and I will yeah, come yeah. back to you because let's pick up on that point. And I would have is saying that he doesn't think that Mana uh, capitalised enough on their by-election win. They've been a bit slow in announcing their candidates. How do you think they're going to track over the next few weeks? Well, when you're setting up a new party, there's obviously a whole lot of infrastructure that you have to put into place. Um, and obviously, you know, there are branches to set up, there's, there are communication channels, there's funding to look for. So I think that all needs to be taken into account um, when you're thinking about these kinds of polls. What did you make of Hune's comment when he said, yes, I think that I, I haven't focused enough, I haven't concentrated enough on his electorate, on Te Tai Tokero, and he needs to do that over the next few weeks. What did you make of that? Well, he's got a difficult role. I mean, he's, um, as a kind of key leading figure, obviously, in, in the Mana Party, people want to see him. Um, so he's going to be the one that fields many of the requests to speak. Um, so he's got a difficult job, obviously, in juggling some of those um, priorities. I think the names, too, Shane. The names mm. is important. You put mm. Hone Harawera and Calvin Davis, then you get a better idea. Shane Jones and uh, uh, Peter Sharples, you know. So, so, But I think I think the trend is, is, is sort of shows that Hone's got to put a 
a bit more time in the north, but I'd be stunned if he was behind in the seat at the moment. But in, in these electorate, I mean, it's basically more of a party vote um, that, mm. from this poll that we're seeing. Because sure. in Taitonga, for example, we see 12% um, going to national. I mean, national never fielded a candidate in the 2000 election. Sure. They're not going to. So where would that 12% go? And I think that's a really interesting question. What about the, if we go back to the party vote result? Because the Māori Party really doesn't need the party vote, does it? it it's those cr crucial um, seats that, they, that, they're, that they're after, the electorate vote. Yes. Uh, whereas parties like Labour and, 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 and those other you know, bigger parties, if yes. you like, national, it's very important, the party vote. Yes. Shane, Shane, I think um, it goes back to that issue of you know, uh, spreading yourself a, a little bit too thin. Um, two Mo independent Māori parties is difficult for Māori dim to resource. And uh, the party vote is probably more important to mana than anyone else. If, if Horne wins the North and the party vote's uh, not too bad, uh, they could end up with two or three, but, uh, two, two, two or, two or three um, candidates. Yeah. Now, going back to spreading yourself thin, I mean, uh, to Tai Tonga, uh, the thing that's against the Māori party and mana and to Tai Tonga is that somewhere between 30 and 60 per cent of the Māori voters in Christchurch who would vote for those parties are now living in the North Island. Can, can I just uh, pick up, because Tariana, she categorically ruled out doing any sort of deal with, with mana or with Labour. Um, what, what, do, what, do you, well, what does the panel I think, think about I mean, that? I think it's disappointing. I think because? It's disappointing. Be because you're opening the door to Labour. Because you're opening the door to Labour, and and uh, and we're seeing that, and we're seeing that trend in terms of uh, 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 the poll, and uh, you know everybody, uh, there's a real investment in the Māori Party, and the whole idea of the Māori Party was to shut out people like our know, mate Jonesy over there. And, he and, might be and, shutting himself uh, out. No, no, but Shane endorses it. He embraces the the war between Hone and and Tariana, and I just think it's sad, and I think it's going to take a little while before our people get the message in terms of that party vote for mana or so the party. So do you think that mana should be doing a deal with Māori and vice versa Absol in these crucial ab seats? Absolutely. Maria, yeah. you're nodding your head as well. Yeah. Tell us why. I think there's a lot to be gained from that kind of cooperation. Um, there obviously have to be some tensions um, put to the side, but certainly I think um, there's a, a lot to be said for that. But we've seen it happen before, haven't we? Like even in mainstream parties, things have blown up, exploded, but they've so soon been able to sit around a cabinet table. Well, they did it in Labour and the Alliance. So mm. Māori, I don't know, we sort of self destruct when you look at Mana Mutsuhake and you look at Eva and you look at look at the history, for some reason we don't want to do a deal. But it would be great to see a deal otherwise. I mean, the Māori Party was formed because of Labour. Now it looks like we're welcoming, welcoming them back in two or three seats. Shane, I, I think they should compete as openly as they possibly can. Because the, the, why? Well, the three parties uh, represent quite dis uh, overlapping but also quite distinctive philosophies and I think those options need to be put to Māori voters and, and Māori voters. So you think put choice. them all up there and whoever comes out wins? Yes, I think so. And and I, I don't think that uh, Labor's necessarily going to come through the middle. There are a number of reasons why things are happening the way... Tell us briefly why before we move uh, on. Uh, things are unfolding the way they are in Tai Tonga, partly because of the demographic and partly because of the her heritage of uh, Te Rino, I don't think Labor's going to come through the middle in the north. Uh, I think the place where uh, there is a real even contest mounting, and no, and I don't think Munn has uh, looked at this sufficiently, is, is Auckland. But if you look at Hauraki mm. Waikato, um, Ikaroa Rafati, the Māori Party was really making some gains there. Nanaia Mahuta only won by 888 votes in the 2008 election. That was a really close contest. But with another party in there, it could split the vote. Well, it has. Right. OK, we, we will pick up some of these points later on, because let's move on now to what you think of the Māori Party's performance. Scotty. Well, we asked, do you believe the Māori Party has represented Māori well? Just over half said yes. Next we asked, do you support the Māori Party's decision to vote for the Marine and Coastal Area Bill? Again, more than half said yes. We asked if you accept compromise was worthwhile to ensure they had a seat at the Cabinet table. There was a resounding yes. And when it came to claims that the party lacked energy and its candidates were too old, well, good news for the Māori Party. The majority of voters we spoke to disagreed. Hone Harawira, let's begin with you, because are you surprised with those results? I'm not particularly surprised about the issue about the Marine and Coastal Area Bill because a lot of people I've talked to about it, they're just sort of, they're really over it. They really, they think it, we should move on from it. But if you look to the, to the reality, 71 of 72 Māori organisations opposed it. The majority of individual Māori submitters opposed it. Uh, Māori political commentators 
completely uh, opposed it, as did most political comments. And while that's very important, but it's the voters at the oh, end no, of the sure, day. Sure, sure, They're sure. They're important no, now, no, aren't they? And, and I accept, accept the fact that uh, <clears throat> the Ma Māori dem has kind of gotten a bit over it. But, the, you know, the decision of the United Nations to allow the New Zealand government to take that little bit of foreshore and seabed that the uh, Māori Party gave back and allowed all statutory authority stay with the Crown has now gone from there all the way up to the edge of the continental shelf. So it's been a massive loss that Māori Indian But don't these results actually debunk a lot of the criticism that you level at the Māori Party, including sitting around the Cabinet table, including the marine and coastal legislation, including representing Māori well? If you, if you weren't talking about representing Māori well... No, no, please no, answer no, no. my question. I will answer, answer, question. I will answer your question. Here it is. If you were to ask Māori Dim right now, Shane, go out there on the street and ask them right now, do you think it was a good idea to, for the Māori Party to increase, to vote for an increase in GST? 99% of them would say no. Do you th if you were to go out and ask them, was it a good idea for the Māori Party to stay in coalition with National while they're passing anti-worker legislation? They'd say no. Point anti taken. No, taho, point anti taken. Anti-beneficiary legislation, anti-Māori legislation, yes. they would say no. But point taken. But so, we've so gone out there, Hone, you, you, and we've asked the question. It, you can collapse it down to down to a specific question at yeah. a specific time. And that's what we've done. That's what we've done. But the reality is, if you was to go through it, point by point, Māori Dem would be horrified at but the But the reality is, though, taken. when when voters go into that ballot box and they yeah. tick whoever they're going to support, they're yeah. not going through all that list that you're going through, are they? They're going based on whatever, however they decide how they're going to vote. Mm. That, that's right. And it's my job to ensure that they understand the realities. And the realities are that Māori Dem should not support a party that cling so tenaciously to National and to ACT. Because National have made it quite clear that they're going to go into coalition again with ACT and ACT is going to be led by Don Bresch. Tariana Ture, you're smiling. And I, and, and I think that you're smiling because this shows that your message is getting through. Mm. I, I think that our people have got past this whole thing of where you pick out those things that it suits you to. You look at the whole issue around GST. Now, Horney was with us at that point, mm. and he knows, Post. as well as I do, that National had originally said they would not be touching GST. Now, when we signed up to the coalition... That's what they told us. Mm. Now, after we get through some period of time and they're needing more tax money because they've given more money back to those who are more wealthy, they then decided to attack GST. We were left in a very, very difficult position because we'd signed up to an agreement to support them on confidence and supply, anything to do with money. Hone knows that. So to go out there saying to people, we let them down because we voted for GST, the fact is, the biggest issue that's confronted our people has been the rise in commodity prices. Mm. That the cost for them to be able to live every day, to buy their kai, those are the things that are impacting more considerably because in actual fact, believe it or not, National did put in place a buffer to rise, raise the incomes of those families the 2%. So it is the commodity prices <coughs> that are affecting our people. Bread and butter issues. Absolutely. Shane Jones, let's right. ask you the same question that I put to Hone, because Labour has been quite critical of the Māori Party as well. I saw your eyebrows raised a little with those results. You are a bit surprised. Um, you know, the issues that you've highlighted here are the issues of cultural ideology. And with the greatest of respect, they're yesterday's issues. The seabed in foreshore has enjoyed its zenith. I think Horne is partly right. I'll never agree with him fully. The issues at the end of the day that will motivate voters when they turn up to cast their vote really are the daily grind that Tuddy has referred to. Mm. And I've never seen a digipole that actually focuses on the sheer difficulty of a working-class Māori family earning between 15k and 25k. Māori media have this love affair with delving into cultural ideology. Let me tell you, that issue has come and gone. Our Māori voters... Well, it may have come and gone, but we actually take our lead from you guys, the Māori politicians. It's you guys that raise these issues in Parliament. It's you guys that put these arguments. It's you guys that put these criticisms out. We're only following your lead. Well, you've got selective listening then, Shane, because consistently we've been pushing issues to do with the cost of living, the quality of life, Sure, the rise in commodity prices, it's a curse. We earn a lot as an agricultural nation, and then as New Zealanders, we're blighted by the, the need to pay those international prices. So with the greatest of respect, come back to the issues that most of us talk to on a regular basis. When we're on the marae, we talk about the totems 
of or the icons of cultural ideology. And your program needs to get to where the social and democratic can I just clarify? Issue is. Can I just clarify? We actually do have all those issues, right. but that's for another day, for another program. Okay. And you may be on that couch too, can Shane I, Jones. Can I just yes. add something to that in terms of the cultural ideology? Because in actual fact, what the Māori Party is saying is that culture counts, be it in education, health, it doesn't matter where it is. If we don't see our culture as integral to absolutely everything that we do, that's why we're losing out. I mean, Whānau Ora is about the restoration of cultural ideology, actually, to make us the independent people that we once were. This whole idea that we should be out there telling our people we're going to give you breakfast, we're going to give you lunch, we're going to do all these things for you, those days are over. We need to restore our self-belief that we can do for ourselves. That's what's important for yeah, our they're future. They're going to do it with John Key, Tuddy.